Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, we're going to take a look at our third and final method for solving a system of equations. That third method is called the elimination method. Now remember, with a system of equations, we're given two linear equations, and we're trying to figure out where those two lines intersect. We always end up with an x and a y value, and that represents where those two lines intersect. And so far, we have learned two different methods. We learned equal values method. Remember, we use equal values method when both equations are equal to the same variable. And most commonly, they both start off with y equals. Then we learned in the second method that sometimes we can solve it when we only know one variable is equal to something, and maybe the other equation looks something similar to this. And we would just take whatever that value is and we would substitute it in for y and we could solve. Well, the system of equations that I have on the left now looks like neither of that. I don't have any equations here that are solved for a single variable. None of them start out as y equals or x equals. They are both not in that form. So that is why we use what we call the elimination method. It's because equal values and substitution will not work in this case. But luckily for us, there is a third method that we can use to solve a system just like this. And most students find this one the most easiest to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the steps on how to solve a system of equations using the elimination method. Now, when we use equal values method or we use substitution method, we end up creating a single equation. We always end up with a single equation with a single variable so that at the very end, we can end up with x equals or y equals and that it's gonna be solved for some number, right? The goal is to take those two equations, turn them into one equation. That same idea is going to be here when we're using the elimination method. I have my top equation and my bottom equation, but I wanna combine them so I can make one equation. And again, we're gonna want a variable to go away. It needs to cancel, zero out, drop out, however you wanna say it. We wanna end up with a single equation that has only one variable. So here's how we do that with the elimination method. I'm going to take this top equation here, I'm going to take this bottom equation here, and I'm going to add those two equations together. I'm gonna to put a big plus sign on the left, a big equal sign bar underneath, and now we're going to combine the like terms to create a single equation. Now over here on the right, I have negative two plus 16. Well, negative two plus 16, that will turn into a positive 14. I bring down the equal sign. I have positive two x plus positive five x. Well, two x's plus five x's will create seven x's. And now we look at our y variable. So we've taken care of the constant, we've taken care of the x variable, now we're looking at the y variable, and look what happens there. I have three y's that I'm adding to negative three y's. What's gonna happen here is when I take the three y's and add it to negative three y's, those are going to zero out. They end up creating zero y's which we don't really have to write because there's no y's there, and they just go away. So now we're stuck with this single equation here, 7x equals 14, and there is no more y variable. That is the biggest step for elimination method. That is the major step. We take the top and the bottom equation, we add them together, in the hopes that a variable will drop out. In this case, my y's dropped out. Sometimes you'll come across a problem where the x's drop out. It doesn't matter which one drops out first, just as long as you have a variable 
that will zero out. So now this is gonna be very similar to our equal values method and our substitution method. We now have a single equation. Let's solve for x and then let's solve for y. So I have 7x equals 14. To get x by itself, I will divide both sides by 7. I do that so that 7's on the left side turn into a 1. They simplify to 1, so I'm left with just a single x equal to 14 over 7, which equals 2. So I know that the x value for the point where those two lines intersect, I know that that x value is 2. Now I just have to find out my y variable. Now, just like with equal values method or with substitution method, I get to pick and choose which equation to use here. It truly doesn't matter if I use the top or if I use the bottom. Both of those equations are gonna give me my y value. So let's go ahead and use the one on the top. So I'm gonna rewrite that equation. 3y plus 2x equals negative two. I now know though that my x equals two. So I'm gonna take that fact and I'm going to now drop in two as my x value so that I can solve this equation here for my y variable. You'll notice that I did not write that x value here because I know that x is two. Now I have an equation that I can solve and to get my y value. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna bring down the three y, that doesn't change, plus two times two becomes a four, equals negative two. All right, we're almost there, we gotta solve for y. So let's see, I wanna get my constant over to the right side, so I'm gonna subtract four on both sides, so that these fours here will zero out. I bring down the three y, that hasn't changed, negative two minus four, that becomes a negative six. Finally, I want y by itself, but I have a three as the coefficient. So we just need to divide both sides by that coefficient of three. I do that, three over three simplifies to one, and we're left with y equals negative six divided by three, which is negative two. So now I know my x and my y value, I now know where these two lines intersect. They intersect at the point two comma negative two. Now, some of you might be wondering, okay, he used the top equation here and he solved for his y. What happens if he uses the bottom equation? And I'm gonna show you, you normally don't have to do this, but I'm gonna show you that it doesn't truly matter which equation you use just as long as you're doing the math correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that second equation on the bottom here, negative three y plus five x equals 16. And I'm gonna show you that I can still drop in that value of two for x, and I should still end up with y equals negative two. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna rewrite the equation. But again, I'm not going to write that x value in because I know that it's two. And now I can solve this equation for y just like I solved the equation on the left. So I bring down the negative three y. Five times two creates a positive 10, which equals 16. All right, just like I moved the four over by subtracting it, I'm gonna move over the positive 10 by subtracting 10 on both sides those 10 zero out, I'm left with negative three y equals 16 minus 10, that becomes a six. Final step is to divide by the coefficient. This time my coefficient is negative three. The negative three is on the left, simplify to one. I'm left with y equals six divided by negative three. Again, that simplifies to negative two. So. Hopefully we can see here that it truly does not matter which equation you substitute your x value back into because you will always get that answer of y equals negative two. It didn't matter which one I used, just as long as I did the steps correctly. So that's it. That's the elimination method. 
That's how we combine two equations where neither of the equations are starting off with y equals or x equals. When you have both equations that aren't set up that way and that equal values method and substitution method won't work, we want to use elimination method. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.